Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Timothy Bro, storm spotter from the National Weather Service in Phoenix, Arizona. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, and I'm doing something a little bit different this year. Uh, for December here, 2017, we're coming to a close of 2017 and gonna get ready to start a new year. So, um, anyways, we're gonna wish everyone a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, or whatever you want to call it. I like to call it Merry Christmas, but anyways, um, some interesting weather events have been taking place here for the month of December. Um, after a very notoriously warm October and November across much of the country, and November also relatively warm speaking uh, for much of the country, uh, December has behaved a little bit differently. We've had a, a significant blocking pattern that took place at the very end of November and really took hold the first week of December here. Uh, it now being December 13th, we're starting to see signs that this pattern of blocking may or may not, but most likely will at some point start breaking down. Uh, so what you're seeing here is probably the National Weather Service, all maps, logos, and different things that I use for the videos. Uh, this is going to be a series of videos, probably 15 to 20 minutes long each uh, or so, and uh, it's going to be several several videos long describing what uh, we're going to have for the winter season here, 2017 and what to expect. So if you guys haven't heard already, we're in a La Nina uh, for this year, the second La Nina in a row. Uh, last year's La Nina was very weak, um, topping at 1.5, negative 1.5 briefly, and then quickly dropping as we headed into December, it dropped down to 0 0.7. Uh, we're talking negative values here, so it was like negative 0 0.7. This year we're currently around negative 0.7 to negative 0.9. Uh, so that makes it a strong, weak, or very weak, low, moderate, grade La Nina. Uh, so it's not the strongest of the duo. Um, but some of the coldest temperatures have been coming down, not so much from in La Nina's influence. Uh, it is typical of a La Nina pattern to have this repetitive pattern uh, of blocking. But we also look at the PDO. And when the PDO is positive, uh, we tend to get very large ridges of high pressure, uh, much like this is showing here, there's a large ridge of high pressure here and the jet stream is wet and cool in the Pacific Northwest and wet in the Ohio Valley with a persistent trough over the northern Great Lakes region or Hudson Bay up here in Canada. Uh, so basically what we're looking at is the pattern we've been having, as you've probably heard recently, we've had snow in northwest Mexico, Texas, southern Texas, parts of Louisiana, even Florida, northwest Florida got it in on the act and the Carolinas and then the storm worked up the east coast and dropped some uh, heavy wet snow in my neighborhood, Lowell, Massachusetts, where I was born and raised for at least 13 years of my life. And um, anyways, that storm was very cold. Uh, not the fact that it was extremely cold air. Uh, it was very cold air that was dropping south. And it came out of the north from Canada, uh, out of the Hudson Bay area, and a trough developed in the southern and southwestern deserts, and then slowly worked its way up. Um, that actually brought the first measurable rain to Sky Harbor National and International Airport here in Phoenix. And it had gone 103 days with no measurable rain. And you know what? It wasn't that dry just here. It's been dry like that in Southwest California. It's been dry in Texas. It's been dry in the, in the Florida Keys. It's been dry in the Southeast. And even in parts of the Midwest are now in some type of drought, ranging from abnormally dry to um, severe drought across much of the south, and that's because of La Nina's influence. So, since we've had some La Nina influence early on, the chances that of it continuing that dry all winter aren't agreed upon right now. So, we could be looking at a very dry winter overall for the southern tier of the, of the country, or it may not be. So, again, we have other things that are working against La Nina this year as well. And, you know, last year we had a La Nina, and you said, well, Tim, if we had a La Nina, why is there so much rain? Why did California and Arizona and New Mexico see so much rainfall? Well, the only thing that offset last year's La Nina is that we had a very strong Pacific jet stream uh, that was pushed southward because of a temper temperature differential. What we had was very cold, below average temperatures here in the North Pacific and just south of Hawaii. It was very, very warm, well above normal temperatures, some some 2.5 degrees above normal. And we still had a mixed bunch of temperatures here at the equator. So it kind of offset the La Nina, and we were also starting to come out of the La Nina during this time, late December through much of the winter, which is why it brought the heavy rains to California, as we had an extended Pacific jet 
that was moisture loaded because of this temperature differential. Uh, most likely the scenario is causing the heavy rain. So what about this year? Is there any temperature differential? So a lot of people probably know, want to know what is La Nina. La Nina is basically a cooling of the Pacific waters. Uh, again, along the equator here, this is where it gets really cold. Right now we're running anywhere between negative 0.5 to negative 2.5 um, in the Nino 3.4 region, which is where we measured El Nino or La Nina. Um, we do take all regions into account, El Nino 4 region, 3.4, 1 and 2, um, but we uh, really measure it at 3.4 to get a good opinion or idea of how strong the strength of the La Nina is. is right now, we're in currently weak El Nino conditions um, right now, but you wouldn't think so with how dry it's been across the desert southwest. So is that going to change? Well, the answer to that may surprise you. And it is highly unusual. This is the coldest it's been in 40 years just last week here. Uh, December 5th and 6th and 7th, very heavy snows in parts of North Florida, uh, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, South San Antonio, Texas, all these areas that typically don't see much snow. Um, they may get a few flurries every year or every other year or so, but it doesn't accumulate like it did. Uh, some areas getting well over a foot of snow, even in the deepest parts of the southern parts of the state. Uh, incredibly and almost unheard of. Uh, some shattering the oldest record since records began seeing the most snowfall from a single event. And so early, it's actually the earliest it was ever recorded. It was usually after December 20th or so that we started seeing snows of that magnitude when they did occur. And let me tell you, they weren't that frequent. All right, so going a little bit forward uh, to give you an idea of what's going on, uh, we're going to look at uh, NOAA National Weather Service here now. And, um, you know, we're going to take you there. So, again, so we're in La Nina. It's the opposite of El Nino. Then we have La Nada or Enzo Neutral, which is basically nothing at all. Uh, we tend not to get any uh, thing. There's like no difference or extremes or between those things uh, during an Enzo Neutral. It can go either way, to be honest with you guys. So um, that's basically what we got going on there. And if I can get this video to continue here, if I can get this... Um, do this thing here to get this thing to come up. Okay, here's the National Weather Service. Again, everything you see is property of the NOAA National Weather Service. It is a free site to use. They don't charge anything. Um, this is what I make my videos off of. And again, like I said, I don't work for them directly, so it's not like I have, I'm employed by them. I'm just one of their storm spotters for the Phoenix area here in Arizona. All right, so basically, you know, we look for different patterns. You know, we look at the PDO, we look at the... The PNA, uh, the AO, the AAO, all these different things we like to look at here during the winter. And it gives us an idea of what could cause the weather pattern to shift or not shift or stay that way. Now, let's keep in mind the PDO and the PNA and all these things can stay stagnant for even two months at a time. So it can be very dry in California like it's been with extreme wildfires. Our prayers are with them down there. Very tough time and go of it down there uh, right now. And it's not something, you know, that we want to have to see. But uh, again, you can see the type of pattern we're in. You can see now, usually when we have a positive PDO, this warmth is extended all the way north. And this whole area here is very cold all the way down to the south. But you can see that by the end of the period, it starts to abate a bit. And we start getting a little bit more zonal uh, jet stream pattern and the Pacific jet stream looks to start becoming active sometime uh, I'd say after the 16th we might start picking up some bumps in the road here uh, some different things that might start going on and you can see that on the the 14 day outlook uh, for the for the na uh, the North American assemble forecasting system uh, this takes us out to the 26th which is you know just after Christmas you can see a good amount of cold air here in the northern part of the country. A lot of cold air uh, there down in the south. Uh, relatively mild, but not not hot or anything like that. Not expecting any hot temperatures. And the precipitation outlook is much the same. Uh, you can see uh, wet conditions here in the southern tiers of states and uh, northerly jets. So we're going to have two jet streams. One coming in like this from the southwest, the subtropical jet, and one coming in from the northwest over... Uh, Western Canada and then through the Great Lakes and into the Northeast and that could cause some pretty big snowstorms on the eastern seaboard Let me tell you we could be looking at some blizzards Developing if this pattern were to take shape, but we don't know 
at this current time whether or not that pattern is actually going to hold or even take place at all. Um, but you can see as far as the temperatures, the 8 to 14 day outlook, the temperatures look like they're going to start to... Um, you know, really separate like a La Nina-like fashion. And I'll explain. The whole northern tier is going to be very cold. The central plains normal temperatures and mild conditions in the deep south. So you can tell what the tropics is going to come down. It's going to come down like this and pretty much leave the southern areas relatively on the dry side. It doesn't mean it won't rain at all. It'll just be far less. And, and again, this may change. We might switch to colder temperatures here at some point if the tropping develops like some of the models want to do. And uh, we might even get a surprise on Christmas Eve here in the Phoenix area. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on uh, as to what we could be seeing or what we may not see at all. Uh, but it would have been a long time